everybody, Tori here from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm going to tell you about my newest fascination, and that is Lucy Story by Stephen King. Uh, this book was published in the early 2000s, and I'm fairly certain I remember reading that this book is uh, one of Stephen King's favorite books that he's ever uh, penned, um, and it is a very interesting story. I can see absolutely why he loves it. It's uh, got complex uh, story arcs to it. It's very interesting. It's very fascinating um, and kind of like Pet Cemetery, where it was influenced by an event in his life and it kind of shot that like what if scenario off in his imaginative mind. Uh, supposedly what happened was he was hit by a car um, I think in Maine or wherever he was living at the time and while he was hospitalized his wife decided oh I'm going to reorganize his study so when he finally got out of the hospital, he saw all of his belongings and his works and his current publications and everything that was in his study in various states of uh, being packed up and in boxes and wrapped up. And he had that thought of, okay, so this is what it's going to look like when I die because it's Stephen King and that's where he would go. Um, additionally, the story also involves uh, Lissy's sisters because I believe she's one of five in the story. And so his wife's uh, relationships with her sisters was also a large um, influence in the story as well. It follows Lissy Debuchet Landon's story a couple years after her husband, who is a prolific author, Scott Landon, um, his death. It's an untimely, sudden death. He was a relatively young author, uh, meteoric on the rise um, was his career. So the fact that he was lost to the world and all his, of his publications, um, which were still in flux or in some state of being published or um, being worked on to be published, um, are kind of lost to the world. So it's her story initially starting out with having to deal with that loss. Um, even after all these years, finally coming to grips with having to clean out his study. So that's where that story um, is sparked and moves forward. But the story has so much more to it and goes in every direction possible, and I mean that in the best way possible. Uh, it is at times a laugh out loud funny. It's got these emotionally gripping moments that have you kind of on the edge of your seat. Um, there are probably a few and far between books that I've read where while it was emotionally gripping, this uh, just psychologically intense where you're sitting there kind of like white knuckling the book because you're trying to figure out what's going to happen next. You know, it's a real page turner. Um, the story itself is very uh, complex in the way that it's told because you have the main narrative, you have the main story, and then you'll have these moments where she'll find something because her husband, due to these childhood um, memories that he has with his, uh, his brother, um, which is revealed ha that's in a very emotional um, background as well, through all of these different layers of an object that will spark some sort of memory, and that memory will lead her down this winding path in some sort of story that he told, and everything kind of gets connected at the very end. And so the title, Lissy's Story, kind of takes on a double meaning, whereas it's literally her story, it's a story about her, as well as um, closer to the end of the book, um, through finding an entry point into another world that her husband was able to enter into. Um, yeah, it's it's got that kind of stuff too. Uh, he left her a story that he wrote, and it's his story um, that he never really told her growing up um, or, or moving on in their relationship. And he had a lot of secrets, and he had a lot of emotional trauma from when he was growing up, and his uh, childhood was not a good one. Growing up was not pleasant, although he did have pleasant memories, especially of his um, alcoholic father and of his brother, who um, ultimately uh, comes to a tragic and traumatic demise, um, sadly, at the hands of his um, own family members. I don't want to give too much away, but um, if you have not read this book, do yourself a favor, find some time to sit down and read it because my goodness, it is a gripping story. Um, it's written wonderfully. One of the interesting things that I will have to say, which uh, turned out at the beginning to be kind of 
almost confusing. And then later on, closer to the end of the story, absolutely uh, just a beautiful facet of the storytelling itself is the use of intimate la language. And when I say intimate language, I mean there's different types of vocabulary that we use throughout our interactions in the world. So you would talk to your boss in a totally different demeanor and way than you would your mother or your significant other or your best friend. And those different types of languages you use fall into roughly five different categories. Um, the most endearing one is usually intimate. And that's um, language basically that is inside jokes and words that create new meaning or, or new words that were created out of nothing garbledy gook words. Um, and the book kind of introduces you um, slowly into this world of words that Scott and Lissy had with one another that were amassed over years of living with one another from their families. essentially from the folks that they lived with along the way because one of the main um, influences in the story is the pool that we all go down to fish in um, meaning that from a societal standpoint all of the turns of phrases and uh, idioms and all of the words that we have nowadays um, just think about like internet memes or think about uh, words that you and your friends have created or uh, kind of butchered in their meaning and the things that you say. Uh, that's exactly what the story does, is it, it kind of shows you the magic and the power that comes from words and from vocabularies and the language that we use with those who we hold dear with one another and how that language can be both um, magical and mundane simultaneously. And it's just a really cool piece. Within the first two chapters, they have a lot of words and they use a lot of phrases like that, the two of them with one another. And at first it's very confusing because you're like, wait, what are you trying to say? What do you mean by that? But, um, you know, very early on and, and throughout the rest of the book, it becomes very apparent. Uh, one of the other ways that it's used, um, there's some characters that end up stalking Scott Landon because he has some very weird out there uh, things that he's written and it kind of resonates with a certain group of folks um, that uh, uh, at two different instances attempt harm on both Scott and Lissy at various points in the book um, and it's another example of how language can be both detrimental and um, explosive and it's just wonderfully psychologically um, a really good thriller. It has anything and everything you'd want in a book uh, from petty little arguments between siblings to um, if you're into this sort of thing physical torture. I don't know that part was intense and hard to get through but still a great read overall. Uh, it takes some wild turns. It is a wonderfully gripping, engaging book. It is a convoluted book, um, so it is not the type of book that you uh, read on the go and like half-heartedly. It is the type of book that is like a deep-seated, on the couch, you're in for the night sort of read. Um, with that being said though, I strongly suggest you checking it out. Um, I have the hard copper, hard cover um, version of it and it is uh, just probably one of my favorite books. It, it's now officially made me a Stephen King fan. He's probably one of my favorite authors because of it now. Um, so I believe that's about all I have to say on this book. I strongly suggest you going to find it and find um, a copy of it for yourselves to read. If you have read it, I would absolutely love to hear what you have to say about it in the comments below. As always, I love hearing from you guys. I think it's really cool when you guys interact with one of us, uh, with any of us. Um, it, it just shows that we are connecting with you guys and doing the stuff that you like to hear and you like to uh, read as well. Uh, so that about does it. <laughs> I'm Tori. You're awesome, and remember to keep reading, guys, because if it's the written work, it's game. Bye!